Right, so today I wanted to show you uh, at least part of how I grind racing axes. I might have to make this a multi-part video. Um, but uh, anyway, grinding racing axes is a bit more technical than grinding a normal axe. It's more precise and you want to get everything perfect so you'll do a lot more measuring, marking and using jigs. So this is just a two tire china head. Very, very affordable, great entry level racing axe head. And uh, these come with a 15 degree flat, so they're very, very thin, flat wedge. If you want to use these, you have to obviously put an edge on them. Um, if you use them too thin like this and just file the edge very slightly, they're going to be a bit too thin. Uh, so you want to make the chisel on it a bit thicker. So that requires grinding and also you can take the wings out, lighten the head a bit, all that sort of thing. But uh, essentially the first thing you need to do is find the centre point so that when you go to use jigs it's going to keep the edge as precise as possible and even as possible. Um, you don't want a wonky grind on a racing X. So really how you find the centre point is take a pair of compasses, normally I'll uh, put it on one edge on the corner and then scratch in another corner and scratch and uh, where those scratches meet uh, is where your centre point is going to be and you can check that by going along the entire edge once you've found that centre point and seeing where it scratches and how close it is to what you want. I'll then take a pair of calipers and find where that uh, centre point is. The centre point I found was slightly off uh, centre from the roll pin hole. Um, so when you go to do that side, you'll compare measurements. So yeah, um, once you've got your, found your centre point, uh, you just get a punch, put a little, little hole, and then uh, take a drill bit make a bit more of a divot so it's a bit easier when you're uh, putting it into a jig but uh, yeah make sure you've got this point absolutely perfect measure twice if not three four or five times um, make sure you've got it absolutely perfect because once you've got the center point right the grinding will be a lot easier um, if you've got the center point wrong your grinding is going to be wonky So this is the grinding machine I'm using, it's a Makita 931, uh, 40 grit zirconian belts on it. Um, I've just taken off the handle and screwed this little bracket to it. So I've got my thing for a centre point and um, I just unbolt this here for a large adjustment to the angle and then I can kind of screw this in and out to uh, make a bit of a finer adjustment. I'm going to make something better than this but it was like a you know temporary fix kind of deal which kind of works so I've not really bothered to do anything yet but yeah um, there's lots of different options you could use for belt sanders this is just quite a popular option and it seems to work pretty good for my setup I've just got this uh, little bench thing I take outside The centre point just goes into that divot you've made, and uh, you can see how that works. So, when you're grinding, of course, always make sure you don't grind for too long. I only do maybe 30 second bursts. I mean, you could do more than that. I'm just probably overly cautious. And uh, when you take a long break, just uh, leave the axe in some water, and that way um, it will dissipate a lot of the heat. You know, there's this myth that you can't use power tools to grind an axe, that's complete bollocks. Um, you know, competition axemen all use power tools to get their axes ready, and uh, the thing that really makes that argument not hold up to any sort of scrutiny is 
what do you think they do in factories? It's all power tools. They don't have like a thousand elves at Granfis Bucks or Oxen Cup or Council Tool sitting there with handstones and files. No. Just be uh, cautious when you're doing it. It's obviously a dummy ball. Um, you know, just they just say don't use a power tool to sharpen an axe rather than saying, oh, you know, um, getting all technical. It's just uh, one of these rules. It's because, um, you know, Uncle Cletus with his uh, power grinder is just going to wreck the temple in it. I used two belts on the this uh, belt sander. I've got uh, 80 grit and uh, 40 grit. I use the 40 for really um, aggressively grinding uh, some axes like the oxen cock racing axes. They come really really thick so you'll be there all day with an 80. The 80 grit's much nicer though for finishing the chisel but uh, for removal of material fast the, the 40 is the way to go. As I said before it's uh, I think they're called zirconium belts. They're special for metal grinding. Um, if you just use the normal like wood sanding belts, you'll be there all day. And then they're they're really shit. Like they um, put a lot of heat into the into the steel. So invest in good belts. Okay, so just done a bit more grinding there, and I've got this uh, chisel quite established. You can see it's flat at the moment. There's no secondary on it. It's just a 20 degree. And you can just check with your calipers that it's the same dimensions both sides you can see that's absolutely perfect that tells me the edge is even it's not skew as i said this is going to be a bit of a thicker axe work axe rather than a training or racing axe okay so for doing your barrels um can just grind out, uh, sorry, not barrels, what do you call them, uh, wings, really, in timber sports. But, um, yeah, you can do a lot of things. Just, you know, they don't have to be perfect and all that, but uh, if you want it to look good, you can spend a bit more time on it. So, I'm just going to draw a radius like that. A bit behind the edge. Don't want the wings too close to the edge. And um, I'm just going to draw another line here that tells me that the where the axe eye is, so I don't want to thin out too much in there. And I'm just going to draw another point halfway between. I'm just going to I'm going to say I'm going to make this the uh, thinnest point. Uh, two centimeters down. Actually, I'll just make it that. What's that? Okay, lock that in on my calipers. And, uh, So now I'm going to take my calipers across here and sorry my uh, finger jigs compass. Just going to go for like that. And um, yeah, I'm just going to draw them in where I want them. Just using freehand a bit. Oh. Just try and keep it even as possible.
go. Now it's just a case of uh, getting an angle grinder with a flat disc. I'll make, what I do is I'll make a hard line, like really grind in where my marks are first and then bring the angle grinder back and then hollow out. And um, you know, you can check the depths and all that, uh, the micrometers and that sort of thing. Uh, I'm just gonna really eyeball it. I don't think it makes too much difference how deep they are but uh, yeah it's for aesthetics you want it as close to even as possible however uh, for what I'm doing right now I don't think it's that important um, so just before I do anything else I'm just gonna make sure yep yeah, so when I go back to mark the other side um, I'll just uh, keep that even Okay, so the final step, I've got the wings ground out now um, and uh, a bit polished. Ideally I'll polish it more later, um, probably best to polish it first before doing this step but uh, um, this is the filing stage. I've got a two tie filing jig and this keeps the angle absolutely precise so I can file the bevel now. Um, first I'll do it at the 20 degrees and then I'll uh, raise it a little bit and then put a secondary bevel on it and that's just a file holder basically with a height adjustment here so I'll just do that briefly and then I'll uh, get back to you as you can see there that's a nice crispy flat edge this filing jig makes a world of difference and uh, yeah all you might do is Put a tougher secondary on that um, depending on what wood you're cutting and uh, really that's kind of you have to figure stuff like that out yourself um, I'm still figuring it out and some top guys in the world have a lot of secrets but they're not willing to share so um, yeah play around with that ideally I find the smaller the secondary the better it cuts um, but yeah it's more fragile so that's pretty much all there is to it. I mean, I'm see, I'm not fantastic at it. Uh, I'm only really beginning out myself, but I found that there was a real lack of information on how to do it out there, and for obvious reasons, the guys who are really good at it uh, want to keep how they do it secret. So um, I'm obviously I'm not great at it, but uh, I'm willing to share. So you know. Hopefully uh, this was helpful and um, you know you might be able to figure out how to do stuff better yourself.